Benvenuto, welcome to Cherry Hill Home Cooking. My name is Mark. Today we're gonna make a beef brisket, but this is not a Southern style beef brisket where it uh, is smoked and cooked for 12 or 15 hours. This is much, much easier. This is uh, something that my grandmother would make at least uh, a couple times a month uh, during the fall and winter season, all right? So, beef brisket, in case you guys haven't seen it, I, people don't eat beef brisket as much as they used to. I don't know why. Maybe we just don't eat as much beef as we used to. Um, but basically a beef brisket is the same thing as a corned beef, except it's not corned. So it doesn't have any additional seasoning or, seasoning or spices. But it's the same type of, same cut of meat. Um, and we're gonna make a beef brisket with onion gravy. So, like I said, simple, Ingredients is simple. There's one or two techniques that I'm going to show you. Um, and one of them is, it's actually about 8 p.m. on Saturday night. We usually shoot um, a video on Saturday, have dinner, then Wade works on it and uh, gets it uh, edited and posted uh, to our channel. But there's one little thing with this beef brisket that um, isn't short. Uh, in, uh, as far as time-wise, all right? And that is, is that we're gonna salt and pepper it really, really well, and we're gonna put it in the refrigerator overnight. Now, it's not 100% necessary. What that will do is it will uh, dry out the, at least the surface of the beef, um, and you'll start to get a little bit of crust because of the salt and pepper. That's the way my grandmother did it. You don't have to do it. In years gone past, I've done it just by salt and peppering it and then cooking it right away. It comes out delicious either way. But like I said, since uh, I'm doing my grandma's recipe, we're gonna do it the way that she does it. So we've got a beef brisket here, okay? Uh, this is just about four pounds. So you want a three and a half to four pound uh, beef brisket. Then the really the only other thing we need for this is salt and pepper. We're gonna make, um, like I said, an onion gravy. So we're gonna need some onions and garlic. I've got some beef broth here, and you might need a little bit of um, cornstarch if you want to um, thicken it up. All right, so first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna salt and pepper this really well. And you wanna be pretty liberal with the salt and pepper. It's the only seasoning that you're gonna put on this really, other than our onions and our gravy. nice little rub in there. Make sure you get your sides. Now turn it over and I actually put a little bit of salt and pepper on the bottom of my plate. Now this, these usually come really tr uh, well trimmed. This is the fat side. If you want you can trim some of this uh, fat off. I don't think it's uh, all that much, so I'm gonna leave it like it is. They trim it really well. Of course, the fat's gonna put a lot of flavor and keep some of the moisture in our meat. I'm just rinse off my hand. We're gonna give that another go with the salt and pepper. I have fresh ground pepper. I ground it earlier. Um, you know, of course, a lot of times, you know, you use a, a pepper grinder. I use so much pepper that I find that it's easier if I'm going to do a recipe to do it all, you know, ahead of time. I do, I use a coffee, you know, a little electric coffee grinder. I don't know if we've ever talked about that. All right. Believe it or not, that's really all that there is to it, or that we're going to do to it for tonight, anyway. Like I said, make sure you get this edge. All right, now again, this isn't 100% necessary, but I do like to put, elevate it a little bit, put that on there. Um, you could use a couple spoons if you don't have a, that's just a, 
a cookie rack that I use for this. Um, if you don't have it, you could use a couple um, teaspoons. Idea is it will give it a little bit more uh, air circulation. And that is all that we're going to do tonight. We're going to put this in the refrigerator for overnight. Um, eight to ten, uh, I will say eight to twelve hours. Also, if you're going to do this like for maybe a Sunday roast, if you get an uh, early riser, didn't mean to give you a high five, I just wanted to pump my sleeve. <laughs> uh, if you're early riser, you know, salt and pepper it, eight, nine o'clock in the morning. If uh, you're going to eat, you want to eat for dinner time, that should give, you know, a good six, seven, eight hours um, in the refrigerator, kind of drying out a bit and getting the salt and the pepper. Of course, it's not going to penetrate the meat. It's just going to penetrate the very first uh, surface of it. Um, now, we'll talk more about this tomorrow and uh, as we actually cook it. And we've got a couple other things to do before we're going to put it in the oven tomorrow. But um, this is going to cook low and slow, but not that long. It's really going to add uh, about probably three and a half hours to four hours of total bake time. All right, I'm going to put this in my refrigerate it. We'll let it sit there and get a happy all night and we'll see you tomorrow morning. All right, and we're back the next day, guys. Here is our beef brisket um, after it has um, sat in the refrigerator uncovered. I want to make sure, I'm not quite sure, I can't remember if I said uh, uncovered in our last uh, segment, but um, you can see it's a little bit drier. The salt is kind of nicely um, absorbed into the, you know, very top layer. Um, it's going to be delicious. All right, the next thing we got to do is brown our butter there. A little browner than it needed to be, but anyway, I've melted about uh, a couple of tablespoons or so of butter, a little bit of olive oil. All right, and we need some onions. So I've peeled a, a large um, yellow onion. And we're gonna, now we don't have to be fussy uh, with uh, the way we cut this because I'm going to blend it all anyway at the end. All right, but just, you know, cut it into however you like to cut it. You can dice it even if you want. I'm just cutting it into kind of half rings. We're going to uh, put these in with our roast as it cooks, but we're just going to give them a little bit of fry, get a little bit of caramelization on there, sweeten them up a bit. And we need a little bit of salt and pepper in a bit. So I've got, um, like I said, about a tablespoon, a little, maybe a little bit more butter and some olive oil. And we're gonna let those saute and get a little bit caramelized. I'll throw a little bit of salt in there right now. And so, as always, this kind of brings up the moisture a little, it'll speed up the process a little bit. All right, the other thing I want to talk about before um, our onions are done is our pan. So, um, that's actually the pan that I use to make lasagna. This is a little bit bigger than uh, of a brisket that I usually make, um, and I can usually do that in my 9 by 13 inch pan. Uh, I'm going to use a little bigger one because we don't want it to get all crushed up. You know, if you're going to put it in the pan and push the sides, sides in, the meat's going to shrink. But in the meantime, I don't know, I kind of think it's like, um, you know, you're tightening it up and as it cooks, it's going to affect the tenderness of it. I don't know. <laughs> All right. The other thing we'll talk a little bit about is, now, like I said, this is, this is a little over four pounds. So depending, this is a, for, for a brisket, it's a fast cook. Um, to say like, let's say for a three ounce, a three pounder, um, and uh, you can always tell on a brisket, it's usually like this. You've got one side that's a little bit, uh, it's not as dense, not as thick as the um, other three. So I'll, I'll go around that way. All right, and then you know this this um, this side of the brisket is is thicker. So the reason I mention that is that's going to depend upon really kind of how long you cook it. Um, because you want it to be nice and tender and moist. Um, 
so I'm going to say, you know, usually for about a three and a half pound um, brisket, you know, it's going to take about total cook time. One, two, three, maybe three and a half hours, three hours, 45 minutes. This might go a little bit longer. Uh, but like we talked about yesterday, if you do, um, you don't feel uh, either you don't have the brisket or you don't feel like doing it the night before. If you did that, you know, early in the morning, uh, salt and pepper it, put it in the refrigerator uncovered for, you know, a few hours. It'll help give you that little bit of the finished product um, if you leave it in overnight. Um, but anyway, I was talking about the cooking, really. I don't know how I would started babbling on that. So um, the point is that around maybe 15, 20 minutes before your end cook time that you think it's going to be, um, you know, uh, uh, test it. It should be you want it fork tender, okay? Um, and we're also going to need some garlic. Again, I'm not going to be picky with how I... Um, chop this up because um, like I said I'm going to blend it all so we have a nice smooth uh, sauce or gravy um, if you're not going to blend it and you'll see that option will be up to you of course then you might want to slice the garlic up a little bit more fine just so somebody doesn't get a big chunk of garlic when they're sitting down to eat your beautiful brisket all right, now, sauteing these, uh, caramelizing them a bit. Oh, one fell out. <laughs> it's gonna take a, another good uh, five, 10 minutes. So I won't make you watch us uh, fry onions. We'll be back in a little bit. All right, you can see our onions have just started to caramelize a little bit, okay? And, and for those of you that have uh, uh, cooked, um, you know, but for those of you that don't know what it is, that's the caramelization. It's a little bit of brown crust has started to form on it. Um, and that's right about where I want it. During uh, the time I've been frying, of course, I have just another onion on the countertop. <laughs> I saw Wade's face. I'm like, he did it again. Uh, I've just, you know, lightly done a couple pinches, salt and pepper. Salt and pepper is going to be to taste, guys. I would say that, you know, during this cooking process of our onions, I've maybe used, I don't know, half a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon. I'm, 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 I'm sure it's not a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon of salt and pepper. All right, so our next stop is, our next stop, our next step is, I've got a, about a cup of um, beef stock, beef broth, whatever you want to call it. And we want to let that reduce a little bit. All right. And it'll reduce. We're just going to, um, you know, it's going to evaporate a little bit. As soon as it comes back to a boil, it'll evaporate. And that's going to get those, you know, of course, the concentration of the beef um, uh, stock or broth. I'm actually, let's see, what am I using? I am using collagen in bone broth, beef beef so we're gonna say a lot of times i get criticized for calling it beef or broth or stock so we are using bone broth it was on sale so i think it was two for um seven dollars which was was pretty good so i bought two of them um yes my homemade broth definitely way to put a link up there that would even be better thank you honey however <laughs> it is a long process um and i i'm i'm totally out i really do need to make a batch of bone broth i need chicken stock too um we i made a huge batch of um um turkey soup uh with our uh at christmas time so we got enough turkey soup to last us definitely throughout the rest of the winter um but uh if we do have a winter it's absolutely beautiful. Well, it was beautiful this morning. Yesterday was a beautiful day, huh? Mm, Wasn't it, Hanor? Yeah. yeah, the afternoon. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this morning when we woke up, the, the birds were, the sun was out, the, the, everything looked like it was drying up. The birds were chirping. The birds were, lots of birds at the bird feeders. There's none out there now. But um, I don't know if we ever, you know, well, yesterday was in the 50s. And we live in the Northeast, guys, so that's, um, that's really high for us up, up here. We've had so much rain. Oy. Um, it's our, our yard is saturated. But anyway, 
if that's the only problem we ever have in life, then thank you very much, God. Um, I said I said that for a reason, but I don't remember why. Do you? Uh, nope. <laughs> oh, but, oh, oh, cooking some, uh, making some bone broth. Um, I did make um, a nice big batch of um, my uh, meat flavored or my meat sauce, uh, red sauce, a couple, uh, several weeks ago. So we still have some of that left, but... I'm just waiting for the water to boil, so you can see. Uh, but yeah, we do need to make, definitely need to make some beef broth. Um, all right, so yeah, as I said, when well, we're gonna let this come to, I'll make you guys uh, watch me do this. I don't know, what else? What else, is anything else exciting going on? We had a really nice Christmas. Um, I know what my favorite gift was. I'll tell you that in a minute. What was that? Wait and I, of course, Chris, we, we're fortunate that, uh, uh, you know, we're able to pretty much buy the things that we want uh, throughout the year. But we always save a couple big items for Christmas because we both absolutely love Christmas. If anybody hasn't um, uh, seen, uh, we, we did a video of our uh, 2021 Christmas tree. It's on the site. Yeah. Um, go check it out. We, uh, Wade's obsessed with the Christmas tree and his Star Trek. Um, gen me, obsessed. maybe a little bit more. <laughs> but anyway, so our so we usually buy each other one big gift and then we'll buy little uh, small gifts. Um, so my favorite gift is... Did you uh, tell them last week? Did I tell them last week? I, I can't so. believe that. Yeah. All right. I'm getting old, and you're so much older than I am. Anyway, I'm going to tell you again, because they may not have watched last week's video, although why, I wouldn't imagine why you wouldn't have watched them. But I got a, um, a new Xbox X, um, and right now I'm playing the um, Hogwarts Legacy, I think it is, which is a fabulous game. I think it is anyway. Um, and what was, did you tell them what your favorite gift was? Wade, uh, yeah, obviously. Uh, in my tablet. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, good. All right. Our, tablet. <laughs> so now uh, we bought new living room furniture back in October. Um, we have not bought new uh, family room furniture. We haven't bought new family room furniture in many, 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 many years. Um, so we did uh, buy a new, a beautiful new uh, leather you know, double recliners on the so end of the sofa, the love seat, console in the middle, all power. Um, and uh, prior to that, Wade would always have his laptop because, of course, he's always, always on the computer shopping or editing or doing something. And all the cords all over the place. So it used to drive me absolutely crazy. So anyway, he got an Android, uh, which I bought it for me almost as much for him because now all the cords are... Uh, aren't around anymore and the the new sofa uh, the love seat part of it's got a place where you can plug it in and everything charge it and right all right guys so we're finally at a big boil this uh, at a good boil this pan is uh this burner i should say doesn't really get that hot so um we're gonna let that reduce just a little bit more i i don't know to give you a it's hard to it's hard to judge kind of when something's reducing, but I'd say um, you want to get it to a boil and then let it reduce for a good two or three minutes. All right, we'll be back in three minutes. All right, guys, I, I think that's reduced enough. Um, you know, I just kind of mentioned it's hard to, you know, what, what do we want it to reduce by? A fourth, a half? Um, one of the things, and I, I guess I've kind of noticed that before is, um, I think it's just because we can really smell it now, huh? You can really smell the mm. garlic and the yeah. and the beef broth and stuff. So let's go by smell. Okay, that's good. All right, so we're going to turn this off. I'm going to add about half of our onions to the bottom of our baking pan. I'm going to pour all that nice juice over the top as well. And that's going to help our end product when we make our gravy. All right, so then we're going to put our brisket right on top. And pour our onions. All right, and Basically, I'm just going to spread them out so it will 
Get a little bit of oniony flavor in there. So basically, guys, that's all there is to it. Other than the fact that we did salt and pepper it and we um, let it sit in the refrigerator, which again, you don't have to do that. You can just salt and pepper it um, heavily and that the um, amounts will be in the recipe on the website and on the YouTube channel. All right, so my point is, yes, we did let it go overnight in the refrigerator, although you don't have to. I think the finished product is a little nicer if you do that. And we want to wrap this nice and tightly. Our oven is preheated to 325. And we're gonna let that cook at 325 for an hour and a half. I'm gonna put another layer on the sides just because it's hard. That's I don't get a, I don't have a lot to tuck in over there. So like I said, we're gonna let that cook for an hour and a half at 325 and then we're going to lower the oven temperature to 250 and we're going to let it cook for about two hours, 15 minutes, two and a half hours, really kind of depending upon um, how tender you want it and how the thickness of the brisket itself. All right, let's get him in the oven. Middle rack, 325. Set a timer for an hour and 30 minutes. Sure, one hour and 30 minutes. And we're starting now. And hopefully our roast is gonna be beautiful in the next few hours. <laughs> See you then. All right, guys, um, I let my roast cook for a little bit longer than the two and a half hours after we turn the temperature down. So I, just to make sure the in our first segment there, it's one and a half hours at 325 and then two hours, 15 minutes, two and a half hours at 250. I think I may have said 225, but just in case, follow the recipe. All right, so let's take our brisket out and we'll... I'm not gonna put it on that burner because that was just hot. We'll test it for um, tenderness. See if it's where we want it to be. If I can get the dead boil up. I did a really good job putting it on. We'll save that because we'll use that in a second. So what we're looking for is fork tender. Get out of there. <laughs> there we go. It smells delicious. Ooh, it looks delicious. And just want to kind of, of course, basically check it in. The, oh, that's perfect, I think. Fork tender goes in pretty well. <laughs> but does want to come out? Yep. Okay, so for this purpose, we're going to scrape our onions off. Because we're going to use this. So we're going to move this to a platter. I'm going to put a pot holder on just in case. There we go. I'm going to move that to the platter and we're going to cover it. Now 
let just rest a little bit. It'll stay nice and warm. You can put that to the side. Now, oops. Um, what does it mean when a fork drops? Company's coming. Ooh. Oh, I hope not. We want a nice relaxing weekend. All right, so we get all our beautiful onions and gravy in there. We got quite a bit of um, you know, rendered fat from the, there, the meat. So I'm going to try to separate it a little bit. It's not 100% necessary, but let's, oop, I'm going to need a bigger container. Be right back. It's got me all tangled up here. I knew I should have took, taken out the big one, but I was thinking, hmm, one less dish to get dirty, but I do want to get all our onions in there. And I'll pour this in there so you can see the fat is, oh, you know what, it would probably be e a little easier to see there, so the fat has separated quite a bit, and already, um, I'm going to put it in, put it in, so you can just skim some of that off. Now, if you were going to make a gravy out of this um, with flour you could just use this nice rendered fat as your fat instead of butter but I'm not going to do it with flour today because although my grandmother used to but it's a little bit easier this way And see, we got quite a bit of rendered fat out of there. And it saves a few, a little bit on calories. Now I'm going to use my immersion blender. Because I want to get that nice and smooth. And I believe I started to say before I started to do that, I do have a cup of additional um, of this um, bone broth. And I'll tell you, I haven't tasted it yet, but it smells delicious. I mean, this might be my new, I don't think I've ever used this bone broth before. That might be my new go-to for a broth or stock. So we're going to get this. Now, my grandmother did this in a blender, of course. And we'll just get that nice and smooth. And that is absolutely delicious, just like it is. And that's, my grandmother used to just serve it like that. I'm going to make it into a gravy because we love gravy. I'm going to put it in or add it to my cup. And this is a pretty big roast for just the two of us. So we'll have this over the next couple days. And undoubtedly, we'd run out of gravy. All right, I'm going to let that come up to a boil. Sorry about that. And Wade's going to get busy on all those dishes. Right? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, we're going to thicken it up a bit. We don't need that anymore. Um... 
We're going to bring that to a boil and we're going to thicken it up with a slurry. Now I have a quarter of a cup of cornstarch and I'm going to use a quarter of a cup of cold water. I'll probably have more slurry than I actually need, but it's always better to have a little bit more than less. Now I did, I had preheated that um, stock so it shouldn't get, it shouldn't take that long. Let's see, somebody sent me a text. Who sent me a text? <laughs> oh, yes, Lisa, we're getting snow squalls too. <laughs> All right, I'll wait for that. Let me get some water. I don't know. I don't really care if we get any snow or not. Um, how do you feel about this? Us getting snow, hun? You want some snow? You might a little bit of snow. Mm -hmm. He did get the snow blower already and got gas for when they were predicting us having a huge snowstorm last week. We only ended up getting what three, four inches maybe. Mm -hmm. But the the day was it the day after or the the next day we had terrible um, no well, lots of rain which caused a lot of flooding. Um, let me grab a wooden spoon. Now, normally I would have done that all. I would have used my immersion blender in the um, in a pan, but this is a non-stick pan, and my oh, actually, now that I think of it, that's why I used this uh, the electric one because it would have worked in uh, a pan. All right, so that's just about coming to a boil. It should be good for our purposes. And it is, it is thickened a little bit. Like I said, this is wonderful on the roast as it is, but we're gonna thicken it up a little bit. So we got our cornstarch and our water and you just stir that, I always use cold water. I know we've said it before, but just in case no one has used a slurry before and see how fast that's already thickening. Put a little bit more in. You can always thin it down with a little bit more beef stock if you've gone, but I think that's perfect. A little too far with it. And I'm gonna turn that down to warm. And of course, we're gonna give it a quick taste. See if the salt level and pepper level is good. So, there you go, guys. And again, you can do this however thick you like it. It will thicken up a little bit more as um, it cools down. Mm. It's delicious. Mm, that stock is really good. I like that stock. I don't think it needs anything more. All right, let's pour it into a gravy boat. Or oh. Yep, I did it without breaking it. There. Right, I'm going to take this over to the sink just so in case it spills like that. Like I said, we'll have a little bit more for leftovers. We're going to bring this over to the stove, get it out of the way. Let's clean up our drippies. All 
it and I just want to, not that you all haven't done, probably done this many times, we'll just do a little cutting. All right, let me get a nice sharp knife. What do you think, hon? Look good? Mm, it does look good, yeah. All right, so you know with this type of meat, you want to cut it with the grain. I hate that word when it was to cut it with the grain. It's like we're in, we're in a woodwork uh, shop. Um, but if, I don't know if you can see. It's running this way. All right? So you want to cut it that way. If you cut it this way, you're going to end up getting really kind of stringy pieces. So we're going to try to get some nice looking slices. Beautiful. And I would say a three and a half pound brisket is going to easily feed six people. You know, because you're going to have other. Oh, look at that. That came out beautiful. Mm. Nice and done. It's nice and tender the whole way up. Mm. All right. Uh, we'll cut one more. Thicker piece. All right, and then you know, pour a little gravy over it. And you bring that to the table. You know, let's put a little more attractive. And you bring that to the table, and your entire family is going to love you. All right, we'll let Wade take a couple pictures, and then we're going to eat. Tonight we're going to have some mashed potatoes and some green peas along with our dinner. All right, we'll see you when we're sitting down to eat. Well, once again, mm. this time of cooking <laughs> is eating. Well, um, like I said, we got some mashed potatoes and some green beans, mm -hmm. a little extra gravy on the taters. All right, let's dive into our beef brisket. Ooh, Ooh. Isn't that nice and tender. Nice and tender. Mm -hmm. Don't even need a knife. Nope. Mmm. Mmm. Mm, that is delicious. Mm, that's really good. Delicious. It is definitely worth the four mm. hours cooking time. Yep. Like I said, as far as mm. salt and pepper in it, and overnight, mm. try it either way. Um, and then you guys decide how you like it. That's really good. That's mm. yummy. All right, well, mm. I hope you have all enjoyed watching to make tonight's dinner. Mm. Um, I hope you make our beef brisket. And let us know. Yes, please like, like and subscribe. And check out cherryhillhomecooking.com. <laughs> See you in the next video. Ciao. Bye. Um, mm. 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 Oh, nice.